Today I thought I'd show you how to assemble uh, an electric eel wheel yarn counter. This is actually the simplest product I've ever had. It's got the fewest parts. Most of the parts are actually in this circuit board here. And while I did solder together the first couple, after that I uh, have just been ordering them pre-assembled. And that's sort of what I'm showing you here. So it actually comes pre-assembled and programmed with uh, the uh, code that I've designed for this. Uh, so the first thing I start with is this keypad and generally I remove this clear screen. This one's actually a defective one so it's a little harder to remove this clear plastic than generally it occurs. Normally it just comes right off but I'm using this one, this video, just because it wasn't properly um, the, the screen cover wasn't quite adhered correctly. But anyways, that normally comes off pretty easily. And then you can take off this piece. So there's just another layer of protective plastic on the top. And I'm just getting um, that started to come up to make it easier to take off once I've adhered it to the plastic case. So then the next step is to put the cable through here. And this is the only part of the process that's not easy to undo. Uh, this is the, uh, this, this little part I don't want to mess up because it requires getting a replacement keypad generally or unsticking it, which is kind of a process. But you get it lined up. It's not that hard to line up. And once you do, you stick it down and it's good to go. Um, and now because I've started this removing this plastic layer, that'll be easy to take off, but I'll probably leave that on. Um, I'm actually, maybe even will ship with that on, I don't know, but, uh, or I might remove it right before I ship, once I've got it, once I'm done with testing and things. But, um, so now the keypad's attached. Generally, um, the order of things from here on out don't matter too much, but I'll do the magnets next. Now we had some issues with the magnets coming out of these holes. It's a pretty tight fit. I rarely do have an issue, but what I generally do is I generally put a little drop of glue on each magnet before I put it into the hole, and that um, ensures that it is never coming out. I imagine when we do the mass production that they'll have like a, a little bucket of glue and just sort of do a really quick dip in that'll make a assembly go much faster. Okay, with that done, now the two halves of the case will click together like that. The next thing I normally work on is the circuit board. So I've actually removed adhesive on the front and back of these LCD screens already, but normally there's a, some adhesive on, on those. And what you'd generally do is you'd there's some alignment holes on the circuit board and you attach this. This is just a plastic module that sort of holds the screen here. And then with the screen, you plug it into the socket. That's called a display socket. And I'm doing this at this stage before I put the circuit board in because it just makes things a little bit easier. Um, there's a, whoops, there's a tool for inserting these uh, types of sockets, but I don't have one handy today, so I'm just using a needle nose pliers. And then once that's done, screen attaches like this. And this screen also has a layer of plastic, and I'm gonna take that out sort of as the last step right before I attach the circuit board. But um, before I do that, I'm going to plug in this 
socket into the circuit board. So this is the um, keypad. So the last thing I'll attach to the circuit board right now is the uh, battery. So that just plugs into the socket like that. And the battery itself has some um, two-sided tape already here to the back. And I just stick that in place like so. And then at this point, I'm going to screw the uh, circuit board into the case. But before I do that, I remove this plastic covering on the screen. There. Then there's just three screws that hold this in place. And then the next thing I do is I put these custom yarn guides into the sides. They fit pretty tightly. Um, if you find them that they move after I install them, you can put like a little drop of glue right there and that would prevent them from moving. But I think I'm going to ship them without being glued because that'll give you a little bit of flexibility um, in how you position them. Like I, I find that, you know, they're not going to move around uh, without something pushing them. So I, I like how they are right now. So I think that's how I'll ship it. Uh, and then there's this two-sided conductive tape that I have. And this is something I'm applying because of some static issues I had on the Nano. I don't think I've not been able to reproduce any static problems, but um, I did have some with the previous electric eel wheel sixes. So by attaching this tape to those metal um, custom hooks or custom guides, that will ensure that any static that builds up on those little metal guides um, goes to the ground plane. I've also implemented uh, something similar to the circuit board uh, rework that I did for the sixes to prevent static. So there's kind of two two ways that I'm implementing here. And oh, okay, um, then at this point, the only thing left is to assemble the uh, spinning disc. So I've got a bearing, and I just stick that in here like this. After you've done that, you can attach it to the top like this. And it is, um, I have managed to work with my manufacturer so that you can actually remove it, which is kind of nice. Uh, if it gets dirty or something, get yarn stuck on there, you can just pull off the disc, which is pretty nice. And then uh, this point, there's just that clear covering on the top to remove. And I can, whoops can take some batteries and just test it out. So it appears to be working. And that's all there is to assembling one of these. I hope some of you found this interesting. Thanks for watching.